Boeing, which together with Airbus has manufactured 99% of the world's larger commercial aircraft, now admits that a software flaw contributed to the two crashes that killed 346 people within the past year. How will this admission affect Boeing's business around the world and especially with one of its most important customers, China? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you from Beijing. I'm Li Xin. Now, two months after Boeing suffered a second deadly crash of its 737 MAX airliner, the company has admitted to a flaw in its software design. According to Boeing, the flight simulation software was, uh, or rather the flight simulator software, was unable to mimic the same flight conditions that confronted the Ethiopian Airlines flight that uh, crashed in March or that of the Lion Air flight that crashed in Indonesia last October. October. The repercussions of Boeing's admission could be dramatic for America's largest exporter and airplane manufacturer. Together with Airbus, they dominate 99% of the global airlines market. The impact may be particularly acute for Boeing's business in China, which is considered its most important export market. To what degree did this design flaw contribute to the deaths of the 346 people in these two crashes? And how much might this admitted flaw, coupled with the ongoing U.S.-China trade war affect Boeing's business with China. Joining me today in the Beijing studio is Edgar Perez, technology author and keynote speaker on AI and quantum computing. Now, in the statement, the company said, and I quote, Boeing has made corrections to the 737 MAX simulator software and has provided additional information to device operators to ensure that the simulator experience is representative across different flight conditions. So, uh, Mr. Perez, um, talk to us about exactly what it means from a technical perspective. How important is the simulator to the safety of the flights? Very important if it can represent exactly conditions of flight in this particular case. But let's start with the point that actually the software that manages the plane, it was defective and Boeing knew about that way in advance. So definitely there's going to be a big responsibility from management. Think about how they are developing planes in this market when they actually dominate the world with Airbus and at the same time how they are testing their planes. There are lives on the line here. So obviously they have to be very persuasive now with airlines, regulators and users around the world that they now are getting their act together. Mr. Perez, what is your take on the situation? Boeing has 100% of responsibility. We're looking at the market when Boeing is competing with Airbus. There's a rush to manufacture planes, to deliver planes, mm -hmm. airlines are requesting planes, there's a growth in the population that wants to travel, so obviously there's a rush to develop and to prepare this. However, this rush has to be evaluated. can only deliver so many planes if I'm going to be able to test all of them in the proper way. So definitely Boeing has a responsibility. It's my understanding. Culture in Boeing was to deliver planes, no matter what. So some corners have been cut. And that's something that Boeing will have to respond, not only to regulators, but also to airlines, clients, hundreds of clients all over the world, and ultimately users. Mr. Perez, um, does it look like um, these fleet might return to the sky anytime soon here in China? Well, not anytime soon. Boeing has to guarantee that they have developed an extensive process for testing of these planes. Regulators, so we need to conduct also absolute and exhaustive testing processes for these planes as well. And finally, users will need to persuade it that that is indeed the case. In particular, I fly quite a bit in the last months, years, and obviously it never occurred to me to ask which model I'm flying, whether mm. it's going to be a Boeing or the Airbus. From now on, I'm asking which model it's going to be, and if it's going to be a Boeing, I will make sure that the management team actually has flown that particular model before I fly that plane. So I'm sure users also will be asking that question all over the world. How much longer is it going, um, is it going to take for Boeing to, rega to regain the confidence of the consumers, um, Mr. Perez? Do you think it eventually it's going to happen because there are incidences of other companies, uh, other planes being uh, involved in crashes in the early days of its launch, but eventually they, they do take to the skies and stay there for, for decades? Well, as you said, the company has been in business for decades, so obviously every company in the world has gone through some bumps. This is a very important mistake for Boeing. Management has a responsibility. The CEO of the company has to go. The fact that we are learning about details of these incidents day by day, drop by drop, bit by bit, definitely speaks volumes about the culture in Boeing, and that has to change. On the other hand, 
Boeing and Airbus have decades of relationship with hundreds of airlines around the world. There are no other major competitors at this moment that could take the place of Boeing. So eventually Boeing should fix that, both management issues and both technical mm. issues, to be able to offer a word to regulators that now the planes are safe to fly. Many thanks to Edgar Perez, technology author and AI specialist.